which tells NBC News they're working to keep up with demand. Walgreens and CVS have put in place a three formula product limit for each sale, while Target and Walmart are also limiting how much you can buy. Some parents say they're seeing a disturbing trend online. They're going to the stores and grabbing what they can find and selling it to people that do need it for more than the double or triple the price. The federal Women's Infants and Children program, known as WIC, can also help people in need find formula. If they're a WIC participant, um, give us a call, kind of tell us what formula you're searching for. Um, we've started to kind of look online at some of the stores so that families aren't driving around all over town trying to find formula. That was NBC's Hallie Jackson, and be sure to check out Hallie Jackson Now weekdays at 5 p.m. Eastern here on NBC News Now. U.S. gas prices are rising again. I know, right? Tell you something that you don't already know. Well, this could make some Americans rethink our summer travel plans. Right now, the national average is 4.33 a gallon. That's about 13 cents more than last week and about 21 cents higher than last month. Now, those averages vary wildly across the country. Nebraska, Kansas, and Oklahoma are a few of the states where you can fill up for less than 4 bucks a gallon. But you can expect to pay at least $4.50 in Alaska, California, Arizona, and elsewhere. All this comes as oil companies are making some big profits. Shell reported more than $9 billion of earnings in just the first quarter of this year. Some of you told us how these gas prices are affecting you. Carol says it's averaging $4.50 a gallon in her area. Carol writes, it sucks. Can't go to my garden outside of town as much. I have an old pickup. Not bad on gas, but still hard. NBC technology correspondent Jake Ward is in Oakland, is near Oakland in Castro Valley, California, with more on these rising prices. Gas prices this week are poised to break all-time records that were set just two months ago. We're seeing from states like Michigan and Ohio, New Jersey, increases of about 20 cents in a single week, a breakneck pace. Here in California, Bay Area drivers at a gas station like this are pulling in, and with a light truck or an SUV, they end up spending $100 on a single tank. For some people, that's really the difference between being in the black and being in the red in terms of their household finances. We've even spoken to some people running a food bank here in the Bay Area who say that some of the people who come in for their weekly haul of free food are actually walking in rather than driving just to save that little extra bit of money. Now, why is all this happening? Well, Grace, of course, Ukraine is the number one headline here. It has disrupted the global supply of crude oil. But there are other factors as well. Big oil companies shut down a lot of production, basically closed their wells during COVID when demand went down and now are having trouble, not trouble, but are in fact choosing in some cases not to reopen them right away. It may be that they would rather put their money into dividends or stock buybacks. The CEO of Shell just recently announced that this was his most profitable quarter in the company's history. And he specifically cited Ukraine as being one of many factors that makes that possible. At this point, we're looking at the possibility that people looking ahead into Memorial Day weekend may significantly change their travel plans. One survey found Found that about 66% of Americans would actually change their travel plans if the oil and gas prices got to basically where they are now, and the other 34% would change it if it went just to $5. At this point, we don't know how high this can all go, but it is absolutely having an enormous effect on the finances of Americans and people around the world. Thank you, Jake. That was NBC's Jake Ward reporting from the Bay Area. Coming up, the world goes to the polls. There are some major elections, inaugurations, and appointments to catch up on. We'll run through them, and we'll focus in part on what's happening in South Korea. To cover the news, you have to be in it. This is how so many towns and cities are protecting themselves. You can actually see they're pushing the gates open every night. It's your news playlist. Top Story with Tom Yamas, weeknights at 7 on NBC News Now. Good morning, everybody. Welcome to today. Future's looking yeah. bright. You've got a whole restart. How does that land with you? Is climate change and the environment one of your top priorities? You know what? Our hearts are ready for something like this. Yeah. It's a great workout. It's yeah. everything Actually, you need. What comes back together? Oh, I'm so you know, happy. happy. That's what it takes to set a record. So glad to see you. 
To cover the news, you have to be in it. This is how so many towns and cities are protecting themselves. You can actually see they're pushing the gates open every night. It's your news playlist. Top Story with Tom Yamas. Weeknights at 7 on NBC News Now. We're here to start conversations about the big things happening in our world. Because it's not my job to tell you what to think. My job is to think about what you tell me. Now tonight with Joshua Johnson. Streaming weeknights at 8 on NBC News Now. News is happening now. Look at what's making headlines around the world. Whenever it happens, wherever you are, it's here now. Hallie Jackson Now. Weekdays at 5 on NBC News Now. Still to come on the Channel 2 News. Well, the waters are certainly receding now. Still too close to call. Lester Holt reporting from the ground zero as it's uh, being referred to. It is, in fact, the taste of freedom. The Haitian people know a little something about resiliency. What's the biggest risk right now? Some of the troops who have been drowned. I want to welcome you to the first presidential debate. In fact, we've been told we can't go any farther. Here are some resilient folks. Let me get a hand. It's midterm election season here in the U.S. Tomorrow, Nebraska and West Virginia hold their primaries. But some very important elections just took place around the world that you should know about. Let's begin in Northern Ireland. Over the weekend, the Irish Nationalist Party Sinn Féin won the most seats in the Northern Irish Assembly for the very first time. The party will appoint its leader, or first minister, for the first time since Northern Ireland was founded back in 1921. Sinn Féin's goal is a united Ireland. Meanwhile, in England, Prime Minister Boris Johnson's Conservative Party did not do well at all in last week's local elections. The Tories lost hundreds of seats. At the moment, they still have the support to maintain control, but Prime Minister Johnson acknowledged that his party had, in his words, a tough night in some parts of the country. To be clear, these were elections for local seats not for the House of Commons in Parliament. In Asia, Hong Kong has a new leader tonight. John Lee, the city's former security chief, was the only candidate in yesterday's election. He picked up nearly every vote from a committee packed with pro-Beijing members. Mr. Lee's ascension to power could further erode Hong Kong's autonomy and strengthen the Chinese Communist Party's grip. And the Philippines is about to have a new president with an infamous name. Ferdinand Marcos Jr., the son of the former dictator, is on track to be its new head of state. That race was called about an hour ago, and Ferdinand Marcos Jr. picked up nearly 30 million votes. As you can see from the sign over his head, he's also more popularly known as Bong Bong. His win sets the table for a return to power for the Marcos family for the first time in more than 35 years. And tomorrow, South Korea will inaugurate its new president, Yoon suk Yeol, the prosecutor-turned-politician, narrowly won in March. He faces similar national and cross-border issues as the U.S., like inflation and tensions with North Korea. That ceremony will take place Tuesday morning in Seoul. That's 10 p.m. tonight, Eastern Time. Joining us now is Andrew Yeo, a political scientist at the Catholic University of America in Washington and a senior fellow at the Brookings Institution specializing in East Asia policy. Professor Yeo, welcome. Good to have you with us. Thank you. It's great to be here. Let me start with the new president of South Korea and some of the issues that are very much on his plate. Where do you think his agenda is going to start, particularly if some of his top line items are the things he campaigned on that got him elected? Sure. So the most important issue during his campaign was the housing crunch. The housing has become really unaffordable for South Koreans. And so he really needs to tackle this. He's going to try to um, provide new home starts, especially for uh, young families. So I think that's something that he will need to um, be accountable to because that is the biggest issue. Too. And of course, on the foreign policy front, we're expecting uh, a harder position when it comes to North Korea. So those are probably the two uh, the domestic and the foreign policy issue that comes comes up first with this new administration. Where does that North Korea relationship stand now? South Korea said last week that the North shot two projectiles in that time. How has that been going in the last six months, last year or so? What is the new South Korean president walking into with that relationship? Right. So since 2019, there really hasn't been any engagement either between the U.S. and North Korea or between the two Koreas. And 
Uh, this Even from the beginning of this year, we've seen 15 rounds of missile tests. Uh, just two were fired within the last week. And so certainly we're seeing North Korea moving off the path of diplomacy and engagement and really ramping up its provocations. And this shouldn't be surprising. You know, before ev you know, the inauguration of every, uh, every South Korean president, we've seen North uh, Korea ramping up these provocations, whether it's a conservative or a progressive leader. And I think the biggest concern, though, is after uh, Yoon is inaugurated, whether we're going to see a, a nuclear test, which hasn't happened since late 2017. Uh, but yes, the, right now, uh, it's, uh, the situation is, is quite tense. We, we seem very far from the days of uh, diplomacy and engagement. I'm glad you mentioned nuclear tests because Pentagon Press Secretary John Kirby mentioned that not too long ago, saying that the U.S. believed North Korea could be conducting new nuclear tests within this month. Here is more of what the press secretary said about that. Watch. We're doing that because uh, we are a responsible nation that prioritizes uh, the reduction of strategic risks. Um, and uh, we believe firmly that